the needle on the record. Welcome to Wage Cucking with JMO. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Wage Cucking with JMO. Um, today we have Blake and Andreas in the mix, and I guess we're going to discuss the the exciting week of crypto we've had. Um, <laughs> Blake, Andreas, how's it going? I, it's good. I'm. Um, yeah, I mean, we're doing the show because I was looking at this uh, list, which is what we do when we send out the newsletter. And there's actually quite a few uh, interesting and or funny or sad things that, that happened. Yeah, for sure. For, for the for the for the watchers, uh, Andreas hit me up this morning. I, I didn't. The show was not planned, but Andreas hit me up this morning and, and said we needed to do one. So here we are today. <laughs> <clears throat> That's been a lot of spicy stuff, right? It's, uh... <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, man, I'll just get started. You guys can tell me if uh, if you have a reaction to it. Yes. Yeah, so the the biggest piece of news uh, or event uh, this week was. Uh, was it was on curve finance uh and ave mm-hmm. uh where uh yeah the curve founder he's using his curve tokens which have been unlocking over the years mm-hmm. as collateral on ave and many other uh lending platforms i guess anywhere that will take them mm-hmm. and he's using that and then he takes out uh, ucc and used to t against it buys mansions does investments farming whatever yeah. Uh, but there's essentially one person who has a lot of curve uh, as collateral. So when the price of curve changes, then really odd things start to happen, including this fake USDT depegging, which was, was it four basis points? It, I, it, it annoys I me. It track. annoys me a lot that people are like freaking out and calling. Like n- n- normally if something depegs, that the, there's the, the, there's something you can do, you know, like there's, yeah. you, you you can buy the depeg, but th- there yeah. wasn't even, uh, that there wasn't even a depeg, uh, like the, 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 the no price of, <laughs> I... the, 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 the price of USDT t- went down to like 99 point five yeah or 99 point six cents right so so like yeah the the the, the, sp- the spread was like all, almost nothing so yeah like, it's a, yeah we're in a group together and somebody somebody in that group some DeFi thing right they're like uct is depegging and i look at it i'm like my trading fee is higher so like <laughs> i would lose on the trade because it's, uh, it's four basis points yeah um but it, it, in the whole in the it, whole situation it, i was more curious um like with you, what do you think? What leads to this? And if it, if it matters, is something going to happen? Was Ave correct to uh, put some stops on this market? And uh, and should I close my curve long? Oh yeah. So right. w- 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 to to preface this, um, the what was his name again? Mitch. Michael. Um, is it Michael something? The, yeah. the 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 curve co-founder like pe- people are getting giving him shit because he bought an expensive house which like i i find ridiculous it's it's not like he did anything wrong like he he developed a platform it's like one of the biggest and best platforms within crypto within DeFi. like it does billions of of, of dollars of volume and I, I feel like that's the point of all this. Like, if if you develop something like that and you make a bunch of money from it, what, what are you gonna? What, what did they expect you to do? Just like funnel all the money back into some other Ponzi on chain? No, I mean, like, you, you can buy nice things once in a while. It's it's not, <laughs> it, it's not that big of a deal. But so so what he did was he he deposited a uh, curve onto Ave. I, I feel like that was his biggest position. It was something like one hundred sixty million dollars worth of curve, and then he borrowed like. I want to say like 70 or 80 million dollars worth of USDT. And then I think he swapped a decent amount of it into like other stables, including USDC. So it's like the the, the concern with, with Ave is that um like the, the, the amount the amount of curve he he deposited onto Ave is a huge percentage of the float, uh, meaning like if it comes to liquidation, it's going to be very difficult to sell like a hundred. Fifty million dollars, or one hundred twenty million, or right. whatever his liquidation price was, of of curve on chain in order to recover the debt. So that they're they're concerned about debt, bad debt. So one of the things that they did was they they basically removed the the curve market, meaning there couldn't be more people that were, 
could deposit mm-hmm. curve as collateral because they, they needed to to limit their exposure uh to curve but but the whole the whole us dt fud and quote unquote depegging thing i did not understand fully and i feel like people are just idiots so like yeah. the, the 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 main pool on curve is is curve 3 pool which is die usdc usdt and mm-hmm. or, or right, right now it has like somewhere around um 400 million dollars in in lp and, and, and that, that's actually quite low um historically speaking but it's also quite low uh in terms of how big the market cap of these coins are like if you just look at usdt alone usdt i think has an 80 billion dollar market cap and mm-hmm. even at like a little at, at, at worst case when the the curve pool became extremely unbalanced it was like 70 maybe 75 percent usdt so it's like 300 million which is yeah well, like a, a few percentage points uh, of the it, the entire float but but the the, the reason why the, the reason why the, the curve market isn't isn't very liquid now is because people don't have incentives to 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 put money in three pool like if, if you look at the the return on three pool you're getting is nothing. I, I think I think it's under yeah, I think it's uh, under one percent right now. Yeah, in, in, term, think, in terms of uh, of APY. Yeah, I mean, if you looked at it, just just I mean the counterparty risk, right? You mm-hmm. may as well just keep your coins, wouldn't you? Think? Yeah, and, and then like especially if like you know like the the, the treasury rates are at four percent, five percent, or whatever whatever they are. Um, it's you you're you're yeah. barely beating just holding your usd and doing absolutely nothing with them so so the, 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 there's there's no no incentive for um for for many people to provide liquidity here so mm-hmm. so like the, the, there's like 400 million in in stable coins in the pool if 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 one person d- 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 takes out like a 60 million dollar usdt loan swap 60 million in the pool versus usdt see obviously the pool is going to get like super fucked up in, in terms of the, the 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 allocation of each asset however mm-hmm. the, there's the the, the the way the the pools work is that the, the, they're not normal automated market maker pools they're like look uh the, the liquidity is concentrated to a certain degree because they want to establish a certain peg and keep the, regardless of the contents of the pool that they, they want to keep a certain peg so like if all assets mm-hmm. in theory are supposed to be one dollar they're, they're not going to fluctuate that far past that they're going to have an algorithm in it they're not going to fluctuate that far past one dollar depending on uh, the contents of the pool is is that where the name curve comes from is it i don't know oh no i, I was actually wondering because it doesn't have a linear price uh, mechanism right yeah I mean, like I think some of the pools do, but uh, the stable uh, yeah. coins ones definitely don't. But but they, on, have, they have many different. Yeah. Yeah. On on the other side of things, there the, there's absolutely no incentive for anyone to 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 to, to fix the pools because like it, no one's going to want to deposit a bunch of, of USDC in the pool because the the the, the what's it called like the the, the, the live thing. price of usdc usdt isn't off pegged by that much so it's not like they're capturing like like a dollar and 10 cents in the pool for for every every dollar that that, that they're depositing and then also mm-hmm. if you're in the pool you're getting a whopping like one percent return a year so it's like the, the incentive structures aren't aligned uh, so mm-hmm. if, if, if if there are like a few whales moving these massive uh, positions through only curve three pool and, and th- there's no other counterparty like attempting to 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 to, to refill the pool with, with the, the assets that that are missing that then it's going to be it, it, it's it's going to be off peg but like at, at, at no point was, was there any actual fight at, at, at no point was was it like oh maybe usdt won't redeem redemptions the the <laughs> next day or anything so like i i didn't really understand what was going on but i i feel like so so after after the um uh the, the the big curve position was deposited and the, the us uh dt was swapped there are a couple of other big accounts that were borrowing big usdt on ave in order to, to swap it on curve as well for usdc mm-hmm. so the, 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 yeah. they essentially took a position where they were shorting usdt versus usdc because like you deposit whatever asset you, you borrow usdt you sell the usdt and if usdt goes off peg then you can rebuy usdt at lower and, and repay your loan so the the the, the borrow rates for for um mm. the, the 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 borrow rates for, for usdt on ave got pretty high but high isn't uh, I, I think it got up where it's like 20 30 percent okay 
Wait, which is like high for a stable coin on Ave. Because you usually you get almost nothing on Ave. But it, it it wasn't it wasn't like high enough to like um I I think Apollo the um I don't know exactly what what, what his position is with uh he, he runs Bitfinex and Tether by yeah. himself basically. But but he 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 was saying that like he 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 thought that maybe it was um the, the, they they were attempting to like uh, adjust the price of everything on chain where the the curve position would be fully liquidated and like the 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 the, the curve owner would would basically lose all his curve would gain a bunch of the usd and the liquidation when go the, the whole theory didn't make much sense because could, like his liquidation price was i think at like 38 39 cents like i think he had like 100 million that would be liquidated at 38 39 cents and it dumped a bunch but it, like when he opened it the went position, out to mid 50s was it oh uh, sorry what'd you say uh how far low the, the price went to mid 50s was it yeah yeah so I, I i think when he opened the position it was like around 63 cents and then like everyone was short um so it's so like the, the funding rates you like the, the, <clears throat> to, to, to to long curve you're getting paid like I remember when when I started long curve, I was getting paid somewhere between like three hundred and five hundred percent a year just to hold the 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 long position. So so everyone was short. But like to 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 me the 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 whole short didn't really make much sense. Like what they were the the price is going to get pushed down like another thirty forty percent within a certain time frame where. I mean like if you have a short position and you're paying that much in funding, like you can't really keep it open for that long like it's it's not like a long term thing you, you, the, the, there has to be some sort of event for for you to justify keeping mm -hmm. a short short position like that right which so. is which is the liquidation yeah yeah but but the the, the liquidation was so, so far off the, the the spot price i mean like it, i mean I, I guess it's crypto I, anything could happen but like mm -hmm. I, I i just don't see an asset that started the day at like like 60 cents going down to like something that's like within the top like 20 market cap a pretty liquid coin Go, so it's essentially losing like 40 or 50 percent of its value within like a 24-hour cycle like it's you just don't is know that like the is that like the lesson for the day today for the people watching that uh don't short anything unless you're going to cause the liquidation <laughs> <laughs> yeah <clears throat> yeah but like uh, also like i i i think it's uh i i i think maybe there's a lesson and 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 don't join in late to a, a crowded trade like the the the, the funding rates yeah. will went up quite a bit or already after when when curve was down 15 percent or something mm. so yeah i i don't i don't know like it 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 it, it felt like everyone or at least a lot of people had the same thesis where they wanted a short curve a short usdt long usdc but but there wasn't it didn't seem like there was very much logic behind like any of those positions mm -hmm. um and like the, the i think the sad thing is is us i was waiting all day for usdt to maybe go yeah, down exactly. to like like 90 cents or something uh, that that, that would have been fantastic I that's crazy I would, yeah i mean from that you you just like you can just repeat your playbook from the used to see the yeah 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 exactly but they like, know what to do right yeah but like the it, it never happened and uh, well, one, one other thing was that that annoyed me a lot was going back to um the, the whole everyone was was making a big deal about the quote unquote depegging when no depegging <laughs> actually happened the the, the block released oh an article yeah, yeah. That, that was <laughs> like alert usd is is depegging <laughs> right now and then I, I i read through it and for for, for first off it, it wasn't even depegging at at, at the at that point it was like uh, i think it's 25 basis points off of like one to one spot and then I, I read through the article, and, and the article says that it it depegged in ninety nine cents, which is which which is not true. I mean, the, the, there's yeah. there's a huge difference between ninety nine point seven five and ninety nine, and they they, they, they just yeah. they they essentially just rounded it down for for absolutely no reason. So, yeah. so then I I I, I called out um oh, what's his name the the, the tall dude um. Oh, I saw. Larry, is it Larry? Well, Larry, yeah, yeah, uh, Larry. I was like, this is like absolute bullshit clickbait, and he's like, yeah, I agree. I'll, I'll, I'll get my <laughs> So like, uh, 
Uh, and then he 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 even sent me a message. It's like, well, believe it or not, well, we well, we want to report this information as accurately as possible. So, like, if you notice any other mistakes, please let me yeah. know. Which is, I mean, he, nice. he, he he seems like like a pretty reasonable guy. But mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't understand whoever wrote the article. Like, obviously, had like a certain agenda or or a, a certain thesis in mind before, because like the the title of it was basically USDT had depegged due to this this curve three pole thing, mm-hmm. Wait, which I mean could could not be further from the truth. Like if it, like and like I basically told him, I I don't know what constitutes a depeg. Like it, it, in theory, you could say something that's like like two basis points off of the spot price is mm. is a depeg i mean the, 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 there's no like industry what, standard what, but why don't we say more than the trading fee on an account on spot uh, yeah i i, I feel <laughs> like i i feel like that that's fair yeah but i mean I, like i i don't i even at like let's say it went down to like 99 cents i, I feel like I, I guess that'd be considered like a depeg but but that's i feel like that that's that's barely news because like the the, the way markets <clears> work <throat> The, 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 there are there are times when like USDT is trading at like a dollar and one cent or like a dollar and two cents for a while, just given like the, the, how how other crypto assets in the markets move versus USDT. So mm-hmm. it's like a, a few percentage points of fluctuation, like in, in interday uh, trading, it can be accounted to quite a bit of things other than an actual depegging due to like a loss of confidence in in the coin itself. No, I mean even even now <clears throat> when you look on Coin Gecko, it's trading like twelve basis points below USDT, <laughs> like supposedly yeah. on the on their pricing on the and no one's worried, <laughs> no one's <Yeah>. too stressed. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like it was a whole lot of commotion for nothing, and then about Paulo as he he's probably like making his pasta or whatever the the Italians do. He's like mm. just sending out a, a tweet every like two hours about. Uh, like we're ready for redemptions. Like mm. you, you, everyone's free to redeem. We, we, we've we've been through this in the past. I don't know. I, I I feel like I feel like he already he has like a script ready to go anytime something like yeah. this happens. Yeah, I believe he wrote that they were ready for redemptions of any size. Is what he said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any. Yeah, uh, it, yeah. I, I I think like most of the people I was looking on chain earlier today. I, I think most of the people that were like copy trading and attempting to to short uh, USDT using like Ave borrows that they mm-hmm. most of them closed their positions already. So it seems like they, they've given up the 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 USDT short. Mm. No, I was just I was curious about this guy. It's not really relevant to the episode, but this guy. Um, so do you think he just deposits? curve on Aave takes the USDT out and just buys shit. Um yeah or or I mean how does he how does he predict what his interest rate is gonna be? I I guess he just assumes it's not gonna be that high. Because like okay. the, the, the 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 borrow rates on, on Aave are usually pretty low. The the thing with Aave is like it's it's seen as like relatively low risk. So if if mm-hmm. if uh if 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 the APY gets to like above ten percent, I'd say like there's going to be a huge influx of people depositing more more stable coins. Yeah, okay. yeah. I see what that. you mean. I see what you mean. I mean, he does have he does have two mansions in Melbourne, so I guess he can just <laughs> sell one. In Melbourne, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh yeah. no, I had to sell the other, my, my I had to sell my side mansion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, he he's also um. I'm gonna look up this project. He looks like a scientist, that guy. He he, he he's also launching a new project. Um, oh, that's cool. The name. Uh, so someone sent it to me like a few weeks ago. That's cool. It's called uh. Al- Al- oh no, it's not. It's not Alpha. It, it's it's called Prisma. Yeah. It's it's like a it's it's like a, a liquid staking derivative. It, it's it's similar similar to Alchemix, and if you've heard of Alchemix, I I've, I've but been on the website. The so, so like the, the the concept of Alchemix is that you basically get a, a self repaying loan. So you, you deposit whatever uh, collateral like uh, Ethereum they have their own um, e- Ethereum uh, liquid staking <laughs> token. 
Um, and you, you can borrow against that. I think you can borrow like 50% of the Ethereum value initially. It, it's paying its own interest. Yeah, yeah. And and, and, um, and yeah. You, your, your debt just goes down over time. So like uh, <laughs> uh, 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 eventually you, you get like all the USD. And I mean, you, you can close the, the position at any time. But he was trying to launch this project called R R R Prisma, which was, it sounded like very similar to what Alchemix was doing. And then I, I sort of pressed the issue and I was like, uh, or I, I don't understand how this is different than, than Alchemix. And so, so basically the, the way he explained it was, it, it was, it was going to be similar to Al Alchemix, but they were going to offer like a, a curve or a convex type um, bribe system where the, they'll, they'll have the, the different assets. And then like the, the, the Prisma token, it could be used as government <clears throat> in order to vote ooh, ooh, which mm. assets that that are used for get preferential lateral. yeah yeah, yeah get, get, get preferential treatment so it creates like why this not mini economy but it I, I mean it's not gonna work in this market but yeah yeah i, I don't know like th 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 they weren't raising that much money i i, I don't know if, if the the project is public or not I, I don't even i don't mind talking about it but it's yeah i can see <clears throat> i'm just reading an article about it now but the the tickers are insane it's like ac usd wst yeah. eth yeah srf sfrx eth <laughs> it's getting like insane with these <laughs> these are uh, prefixes oh, yeah. um yeah you, so, you, yeah sorry so, so, I, I, I was gonna say like the, the, that compounded with his his house buying spree. It, it does feel a little bit like he he's in a, a money grab mood now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, it's like the other one, just um, just just with Ponzi, <laughs> with, 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 with extra Ponzi, with extra Ponzi. Yeah, just like that. Um, do you guys oh, want? There, there, there's one thing that 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 annoys me now with people talking about DeFi is is there everyone talks about like the overall DeFi flywheel and I, I feel like no one really even knows what that means at this point. They, they I don't know what it use, means. use that buzzword. I don't either. <laughs> so I, th I think it's if you take the words bootstrap and Ponzi and combine them, I think you get flywheel. It's like a self. No, I don't know. I don't know what a flywheel is. I have to Google that. What's a flywheel? I have seen that term thrown around crypto Twitter, but I, it yeah, just yeah, goes over my head. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like that there's like all these buzzwords that like I sort of understand, but then like once you really think about like what they're saying, it doesn't make any sense. And I, yeah, like it, it's it, like it, all if, the... if someone it, if someone sends me like like this this word mumbo jumbo like soup of DeFi terms, I, I read through it and I'm like. All right, cool. I guess. It's like when all the all the like all the thread doors that when they when they start like going really deep on all these all these buzzwords as well, and you're like, you don't even understand what you're writing at this point. <laughs> yeah. I oh, this, this, uh, this is, speaking of which, uh, so so we had um, this was like a few months ago, right? But but we had um, Brian Pellegrino, the the CEO of of Layer Zero, on to to discuss Layer Zero, and. We talked a little bit about the airdrop or the supposed airdrop, and he he didn't really say um, what the airdrop was. But then, like, I, I don't know who linked this to me. I, I think it was Brian himself who linked this to me. This is some some airdrop threader like ran his like the video his, his, <laughs> yes. his mannerisms through like a a, a chat GPT esque like um, <laughs> like mannerism. Uh, analyzer and they an, an, analyze his like his his tone his posture you know like what would be in question and then they they, they had like a, a 10 10 post thread about like the that analysis and and how you qualify for the airdrop so <laughs> <laughs> oh my god they've all pivoted to ai that's the thing <laughs> and now they're going to pivot to virtual reality so, uh, yeah, so two Russian guys have been charged by the Department of Justice for laundering the Mt. Gox coins. So mm -hmm. it's like 600,000 BTC. Um, I haven't really been waiting for this, but I guess for some people. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting because it was the the BTCE guys, right? Mm -hmm. Who who were, yep. I mean, it was, it was long rumored that whoever, <laughs> if there was a hack of Mt. Gox and it wasn't just Mark, 
stealing out uh, off the back end that um a, a lot of a lot of the funds that were stolen from Mount Cox were were funneled through BTC and I I think the BTC E went under in I want to say like 2015 2016 somewhere around there yeah it's a it's been a while and one I mean one thing I, I remember which was like a it's like a half joke so it's like really true was we always knew that BTC would never get hacked because like where are you going to launder the coins oh, yeah, BTC exactly. is where you launder the coins <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh it was like a safe place <clears throat> um yeah moving on I mean yeah this one uh the US government's been selling uh it's trying to sell 80,000 bitcoins uh -huh. uh, over time which is not very interesting they confiscate a lot of coins but they're selling it on Robin Hood uh what do you think about that JMO yeah, I mean, I, I guess I guess they have to stop selling on coin. They were using Coinbase to sell, but but in, in now that they're like the SEC is suing Coinbase, I feel mm. like the optics are a little bad to, okay. to, to just start funneling money continuously through Coinbase while 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 selling it. It's interesting that today mm, also yeah. also uh, BlackRock applied for a uh, mm -hmm. Bitcoin ETF, mm -hmm. and in, in the documents, they, they their proposal was to use Coinbase as like the the, the the custodial counterparty. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't I don't really know what's going to happen. I, I mean, like the the whole Coinbase lawsuit um, is pretty interesting because I, I feel like both parties are at fault. Like. Like so, so Coinbase used to be, you know, a, a Bitcoin only exchange. You you would on ramp fiat, you would buy Bitcoin, and that was the end of it. And then, like mm. through like the two thousand, I would say like two thousand sixteen through two thousand nineteen, before their their IPO, they they basically um, added a ton of markets, like these these random like the shittiest of shit coins, <laughs> like it's just stuff you wouldn't really find on yeah. like third party and exchanges. That, so and it was shady like there were there were i mean okay so one guy actually got caught was it him his girlfriend brother i forgot yeah, uh, for they, the insider they, they trading were, yeah but i don't did. think i don't think they knew about that but there were definitely others i think you or somebody else uncovered one of them yeah kobe uncovered one yeah that was that was the one kobe uncovered the one which uh eventually got arrested got charged right i think that was uh it was like he was heavily involved he, he, he uh he he got sent to jail right and he didn't even make that much money he he was yeah, he was basically yeah. he was buying like like thousands of dollars worth of this coin for, 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 for like uh and, then, and, and no, no, but like the, the the they they interviewed Brian Armstrong. I saw an interview with him, um, like some major media outlet, and they were asking about the the, the Coinbase VC arm, uh, so so uh, Coinbase Ventures that mm -hmm. they they invest in in projects, um, and a lot of those a lot of those projects are now listed on Coinbase, and like if you look historically at the the coins that are listed on Coinbase, they they have a decent pump um when they're listed so, so the interviewer asked them very bluntly like so the the coinbase venture arm do you, do you list these projects on uh, on coinbase and the answer is yes i mean th this is yeah, easily so. verifiable you go to their website you see what they <laughs> invested in you, you look at like what's listed on coinbase there's an overlap of like i think like 15 or 20 projects but he was like um um i'm not sure i'm, I'm not involved in the listing process we don't take listing fees and he, he basically side skirted the like the the, the entire question and it's, then, it's silly it's silly because i uh, you should just be honest and said yeah i mean when we approach when the vc arm approaches they said you know normally we'll be able to list your coin yeah on the exchange and then in return the exchange will have to make demands of the venture mm -hmm. i'm saying you you cannot be like you i mean some of the names of the shit they've invested in i can't even say out loud but <laughs> like <laughs> there has to be if you're gonna list it there's gonna have to be vetting on both sides uh-huh and then like i have I, I give the block the which is a, a major crypto news outlet um quite a bit of shit just because i, I feel like <laughs> they, they deserve it like w when the whole ftx thing went down um it later came out that the the, the new ceo was basically getting paid by by ftx off, off the table and then he he ended up resigning mm -hmm. um so, so then like the, the 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 block published the article and like one of the i think he's like the one of the the head researchers there Frank Shapiro was was tweeting about how 
um well the 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 coinbase venture arm is small and like the the, the, there's a bunch of stuff listed and the the, the, they're not really related to like many essentially defending coinbase and Mm -hmm. like uh, i feel like the the sec is definitely in fault in like not providing guidance as to what they can and can list like coinbase it sounds like coinbase has been reaching out to them trying to figure out like what is a security what isn't and they're just the sec is like oh we don't know and then a few months later, they, they, they get slapped with this. So, so they, they got a Wells notice like a few months ago. A oh, Wells notice is essentially that, that means that like that, that, that there was an investigation and that they the investigation found some wrongdoing. And then they, they reached out after the Wells notice and was like, okay, sure. Um, what are we doing wrong? And the, the, the SEC essentially didn't respond to that. So the, the, there obviously isn't like much legal guidance but i i feel like if 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 you look at the the markets listed on coinbase now I, I, at least like uh, uh at least like a 20 30 percent portion of the listings are, are kind of just like bullshit tokens that are like definitely securities but then also just like just absolute shit coins that yeah uh, like a retail shouldn't have access to just be do you hate the free market jmo what is what is happening here yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I don't hate the free market, but the the the, the problem is like people are stupid. Like, if, 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 if people are, are are just dumb. If, if, if people like, now, I know the accredited investor laws in the U.S. get a lot of slack, but basically, you you need a certain amount of net worth in order to be able to invest in things. And like the the criticism of it is it it you know like it just lets the rich get richer because that they they have access to deal flow. But I, I mean, I, I feel like there's some logic to it, right? The the, the the poor people that don't have money the reason that they don't have money is that they're idiots so that they, they, they <laughs> if, if you give them money that they're gonna lose all their money so it's like so yeah, yeah because, investor in, in protection is there for a reason so so you're basically yeah so you're basically saying that um yes investor protection it deprives you of the the chance to invest in uh it's always hard to mention something that's actually good let's say avax mm-hmm. uh but it also saves you from investing in Pepe. Yeah. Or or, uh, or, or, or buying uh, buying like the, the 30% <laughs> Coinbase pump for, for Pepe. You know, like it's yeah, just yeah, yeah, Coinbase. Yeah. It immediately right. pumps 30%. You, you're getting like insider traded by all the the insiders like pre-buying Pepe. And then you're, you're wiring money for from your bank account in order to, to ape into Pepe. It's it's never going to end well mm-hmm. for you. No. What... Um, so I mean, you have a background in poker. Uh, were you surprised that Kyle and Zoo uh, that their previous venture was trying to teach people in Argentina how to work oh, yeah, in what, what I'm guessing would be like a poker sweatshop, but that yeah. the venture failed when they realized that they don't speak Spanish and the Argentinians do not speak English, so it, it <laughs> failed. I, I I feel like there's more to the story than that. I mean. I don't know. Like it, it, it's it's not overly surprising. It it, it is quite. A, it is a common thing, and not necessarily finding like like random people from a third world country to do this, but it, it's a common <laughs> thing to to you know um, in poker to have. So it's known as like a stable or like um, uh, mm. you essentially bankroll people who may be decent at poker but don't have the financial means to, mm. to to play certain games, and then you have a profit cut with them, and you generally put them in games where they're they're being by like a substantial margin so that there isn't that much variance mm. so i i knew i knew soon kyle played poker because I, I played poker with him in the past um but I, I i didn't realize that they were that deep into it and it's pretty interesting were they were <laughs> and, they were they any good uh <laughs> not and, and, and not particularly i mean the, 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 they were like at least sue i think is like decent for not being a professional like he could probably handle his own but they, they weren't good by any means and um, but I think what is more interesting is that story is from uh from uh we can call a puff piece from the uh, New York Times. So I was wondering, like, how do you get that? This happened to SBF as well. How do you? Who do you pay? What do you do to have like the largest newspapers and publications in the world write stories about you when you've clearly committed a lot of fraud yeah. over time? And like, what is this process where you get them to write these flattering stories of you, like <clears throat> of your childhood and, and uh, your clumsy poker venture, your meditation and surfing in Bali? How does this work? Like, 
Yeah, that's a good question. I have, I have no idea. Um, you pay it's, it's you a pay d- a PR agency like hundreds of thousands a month on retainer. I I, I think they <laughs> no. I, I think they even got a photo shoot right like the, yeah the, the, yeah, yeah the they were like professional well. looking photos. Uh, it's so God. good the photo shoot. <laughs> well, okay. with the one with well, the like uh, sitting yeah. quality. <laughs> We'll keep that in in mind for whenever Jmo needs some redemption. Yeah, well, when, well, when 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 I when I when I steal everyone's money and I need my my Bali meditation <laughs> redemption arc, I'm, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put some funds away for the the New York Times piece. Uh, no, but like the the whole thing is pretty ridiculous because like if you actually talk with you, you know you know people that are owed money to them, they, they, they basically don't respond to any of the messages <laughs> like the there's i i i think that the, the, they're trying to like find kyle is like ten thousand dollars a day and until he uh until he starts responding to the the, the creditors messages or something I, I saw that like a day or two ago I, I don't know if that's real but like you know i i've talked with people that are owed money for from from them and it's just like <clears throat> It's uh, it's it, it's pretty funny because like uh, what one of the messages for from one of our mutual friends was like this is like before um this was like right when when it came out that basically they they lost all their money um he 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 hit I believe uh Kyle up to, owed like ten million dollars or something he's like yeah what, what what's going on with this money or are, are we getting it back and then it's silence for like six months and then six months later Kyle messages him to, to trying to shill open X to like yeah you, you, you want to invest in open X <laughs> ignoring the previous <laughs> messages of you know, like yeah. you owe us ten million dollars <laughs> Well, they also a, they also took out a restraining order, didn't they? On uh, isn't there something against Arthur, Arthur Hayes, as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah come on, <laughs> that, 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 that's also real. like what what is Arthur gonna do? Like it, it's it's not like Arthur's in the street with like a machete or something yeah. looking for Sue in the streets of Singapore. I mean, come not on. yet, no. <laughs> um, are you uh, are you sad? Are you guys sad that? Um, Kobe has finally capitulated. Uh, I feel like I feel like Kobe is normally correct, or at least more more <laughs> co- correct than he's wrong. Mm. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, uh, I feel like I should message him to see what's up. I, I actually, he actually said he had come on this podcast, right? Or he, he sort of, uh, he did. yeah, he, he sort of cryptically said it. But like, mm. uh, I mean, I, I I I I've known him for a while, and and I I. Uh, I didn't have any expectations because he, he he told me specifically he was never going to do the 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 up only podcast again. So mm-hmm. I I figured he he also locked his Twitter. So I I feel like he he's probably uh it's probably going through some stuff. Probably doesn't want to be yeah. in the 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 spotlight, you know, or whatever. But I, I don't mm-hmm. I don't I don't really know exactly what's going on. Yeah. Uh, well, we hope he. Uh... We're here, arms open. Yeah, shout out to Kobe <laughs> if you're if you're listening to this for some reason. You're you're welcome yeah. to come on at any time. I'll, I'll actually arms I'll open. actually shoot you a message in like like a week or two to to, to see what's going on. Yeah. And we'll we'll ride out the bear market for you. Don't worry, we'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say moving on with um, our Hong Kong narrative segment. We should get like a jingle for the Hong Kong narrative. With a photo of we'll Dr. Hayes. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hong Kong Narrative Hour. So, um, yeah, I thought I wasn't going to believe this, but that there's been some pressure by the Hong Kong regulators on banks and like big ones with HSBC and uh, the other one mm-hmm. uh, for them to start being friended to crypto companies, accepting them as clients. Yeah. Normally, I wouldn't believe this kind of rumors, but Financial Times, I guess, is kind of credible. Mm-hmm. What um, what do you think? Should people move back from uh, Singapore to Hong Kong yet? Uh I mean, I I think I think the 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 goal is to get people to move out of the U.S. Right? That that that's the, that's the market. Like, if Coinbase has to, like, how many people are employed by? Coinbase, like ten thousand, couple of thousand, or something, yeah, right? At least, like, if if that's quite a few jobs that if 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 uh. If suddenly they they're just like the regulatory environment in the U.S. sucks, we we like don't even want to operate here anymore. Mm. Well, let's just move to let's just move move to Hong Kong, set up an international exchange, maybe have like a 
Coinbase dive US facing uh, exchanges. Like all, all the, I, I realize now that that all the the US facing exchanges are just completely bullshit, and then the the, the the they're just there as like a buffer to 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 to, to avoid having issues in the past like like binance uh dot us no one actually uses binance dot us the 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 two previous ceos were were basically feds and uh, i think they were the one that like ratted out everyone in the binance internal team to the sec that's how they got all the 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 leaked internal messages Mm -hmm. the the the, the same with like ftx dot us like that they offered similar products but they were like substantially worse and but during the same time, like both FTX and Binance were still allowing the the, the big US traders to tr- trade on their main site. It'd be basically anyone that did volume that that wasn't like a huge um uh, what's it called like like a huge like a, a affiliate where the, the, they're getting like a, a a bunch of funds for for onboarding other people. The, the, these exchanges reached out to them and were like, yeah, we're we're closing our. Um, they were, we're closing KYC to US, but wink, wink, you can do this and you can do this. And then suddenly you have residency somewhere and we'll keep your account the same. Mm, okay. So, so like n- n- no one of, of of value actually used any of these exchanges. It, it seems <clears throat> like they were, they were just fronts for um, for the main exchange. So, and it would be simply because there's too much friction, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, like, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's basically, I mean, uh, I, I know, I know. Binance at US had like a decent sized uh, OTC desk, meaning like if, if they wanted to onboard institutional clients, so they could take like US bank deposits and mm. transfer it to crypto. But all, all those, all the, all those settlements, I'm pretty sure happened on the the, the main Binance site, just because that there wasn't enough liquidity on the, <clears throat> the US Binance site. And the, I, I forgot the name of the the so, so the SEC came out and said that CZ was funneling funds from Binance to his, like his, his trading Yacht. desk. Yeah. I forgot the name of it, but like my understanding is the, 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 that's essentially just like the Binance OTC desk. Like if, if you, if you want to go do OTC through Binance, you, you send a transaction, you don't send a direct transaction to Binance that US, you send a transaction to like this, this third, third party that handles the, uh, the whatever and they'll they'll give you whatever asset you're looking for so like i i don't know exactly what's going on i mean it's the, the, there is some chance that they they were also like trading on the binance markets and and, and counter trading the mm. uh the, the people in binance but it, it it does make sense like like for example it's the same way that like the Almeida FTX OTC worked if you ever use that because like yeah, well, did. it's just like a bunch of like Almeida traders right so like if you do any volume you 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 basically post the the trade that you want and then they send you a quote but if if they 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 know that you're a sharp trader that they're going to fill their bags before they, they execute your trade and then they're going to front run mm-hmm. your order so it, it's it's essentially i mean I, I guess that counts as like trading your own markets and that might be illegal by by the SEC but it's i, I feel like it's been pretty standard industry practice to to do this yeah it's um i remember reading some book about uh commodities trading back in the day and that was supposedly legal that was like how you made money especially on fx mm-hmm. it's like yeah you get a big order in so you just front run them that's how you that's how yeah you... yeah <laughs> that's, that, 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 that's, that's how you like... make money and then like if, if you if you're like a big trader you using like these otc desks you would notice it because you would put it in an order and then suddenly See, binance the movie. price would go yeah, up price. you'd be like oh, oh what happened here <laughs> <laughs> uh, for sure absolutely i guess i guess what's interesting now though is um do you see like was it was it brian armstrong meeting with one of the shakes or something in the middle east so maybe i guess the whole middle east and asia are fighting over coinbase now i guess i guess yeah. that's the yeah the I, I actually that the, the, they actually um but binance just expanded to, to to thailand because um like yeah like uh, a a contact I have, he he is like the CEO of Gulf Energy, which is I, I'm pretty sure it has nothing to do with the crypto. It, it's just a like a, a giant energy corporation. They the they they're working with Binance to to get the rights to like they're basically a liaison between the Thai government and Binance, and mm. they're, they're trying to set up like the, the, their own exchange. And like, I guess it'll be like Binance Thailand, but it, it'll link to like 
all, all the markets will uh, eventually link to like the the same central limit order mm -hmm. book that that Binance is run from. Mm -hmm.